Hey lovelies, I'm SJ and this is Infinite Fire Readings. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new here, I assist with manifestation and I also do card readings as well. And I also offer life coaching if you are looking at creating a life that is far more in alignment with what you actually wanna do with it and manifesting a dream reality into your existence. So I do all of those things. As a little sub note, this video is being significantly interrupted regularly by my cat who is chewing on fairy lights too often. So. There's gonna be a lot of editing in this, but hey, it's a bit of fun. She's crazy. <laughs> Today, in particular, we're going to be talking about the concept of self-love. Self-love, what is self-love? And how does it apply to manifesting? Is it important? If so, why is it important? Let's discuss this now. What is self-love? Self-love is taking into consideration your own happiness and your own well-being and affirming and thinking from a place that promotes, encourages and manifests that. When I'm focusing on self-love, I'm focusing on having a concept of myself that benefits me, that promotes my well-being, that makes my life happier, easier, more joyous and makes me feel really good about myself. Self-love is not being conceited or thinking that you're above other people or better than other people. In my opinion, that's not self-love, that's insecurity. Self-love comes from a place where you're on equal terms with everyone else. It doesn't matter, in fact, because you love yourself and you recognize there is no competition, just the self from which to love, just yourself from which you have to guide your own life. It's already probably making a bit of sense as to why self-love is so important when it comes to manifesting what you want in your life and why it has quick and effective results when you do have a good concept of self and a lot of self-love. So I guess that answers that question. Is self-love important for manifesting what you want? Yes, absolutely. The concept that I have of myself is what is going to manifest. If I have a poor self-concept, that is going to manifest results in my life. If I have a good self-concept, that is going to manifest results in my life. The manifestation is always occurring. Life is always reflecting back at us how we view ourselves and how we view the world around us. By having a good self-concept and one that is full of self-love, I am encouraging a universe around me, a life around me, myself, all of it, all of the connected energy, I'm encouraging it to be an energy of love. Genuine love. Love is the elements of compassion, appreciation, friendship, comfort, security, integrity, loyalty, trust, humility, peacefulness. I think love can be a really all-encompassing term and what it is to have love, to have joy for yourself and for your life is very subjective. Though as an overall theme, love can be understood as that self-regard, self-joy, self-nurture, self-appreciation, self-gratitude. I like that. So now that we know what self-love is and why it is important for manifestation, how do we apply this into our life? There are a few different ways to do this, all of which may have different results and impacts for you. Take whichever resonates. There's no right or wrong. It's all again, very subjective. One, be grateful for what and who you are already. Look at all of your positive attributes. Where are you good at things? Where do you like yourself already as a given? What features of yourself, your values, your character, do you absolutely love? Is it the fact that you are persistent in focusing on your goals? Is it the fact that you're really creative in some way? Is it the fact that you can be a really good friend? Is it the fact that you're good with plants? Can you wash a dish well? Can you make the best pancakes on the planet? Can you juggle for three minutes straight? That's impressive. That's actually a really long time, <laughs> in my opinion. Are you good at driving? Do you offer good support for your friends? Do you enjoy your body? Are you good at cooking? Do you look on the bright side? Do you stand up for yourself? Have you accomplished something that you're proud of? Do you appreciate the little things, the big things? Do you have some form of appreciation in your body for something? Can you do a cartwheel? Can you do a backflip? Can you type effectively? Have you got a job? Have you had a job before? Are you good at fashion? Do you appreciate movies? Do you like to read? The list goes on and on. There's no one thing that you have to be grateful for in order to feel self-love. Gratitude is absolutely a form of self-love and it's a form of love in general. 
When you make a really big, long fuck off list about all of the things that you genuinely love about yourself, you're gonna see that you're pretty amazing. So it's definitely a step in the right direction. I highly encourage you to do that. I'll do five things now. I appreciate that I like to dye my hair fun colors. I enjoy it. I appreciate that I'm good with my friendships and I care to maintain them. I appreciate that I'm taking care of a little kitten now and I love that I'm giving that a go and, you know, experiencing a new version of myself as a cat mum. I appreciate that I'm making this video for you right now. I appreciate that I have an art exhibition and that I've manifested that into my reality. I appreciate that I'm relatively friendly. I love that I can easily talk to people on the street. I love that I'm good at dancing, or I think I am, but I like dancing. <laughs> I love that I'm really good at starting new projects and I love that I'm really quick at learning. I love that I am doing a video on self-love and that it's making me feel really good about myself. I love that my own method is working on myself so well. <laughs> There's so many things that I can be appreciative about myself for myself. It doesn't have to be for anyone else. The thing is, it's going to emanate from you outward anyway. You can absolutely love who you are solely for the purpose of feeling good about yourself. In fact, I encourage that because that will naturally emanate outwards. It's not conceited. It's not thinking that you're better than or less than or any of that. It's genuinely self-loving and it feels wonderful. In fact, it's living in an end state straight away. So gratitude and appreciation for self is huge. I'm grateful for all of those traits I mentioned before. Absolutely. Two, and this is the part you might've been wondering about. But SJ, what about all of my self-doubts that creep up? I know I can make a list of all the wonderful things and how amazing I am, but what about all the crappy things I've done? How can I override that? How can I overlook that? What about the traits of myself that I just don't like? All of that, all of that stuff right there, that's lack of self-love. Yes, yes it is. Welcome, welcome to the truth. You can go on for days, weeks, months, years, about the old story, how you didn't do this right, how you could have done that better, how you disappointed this person, you hurt this person, you hurt yourself here, you aren't good at this trait, you aren't good at that skill, you're not pretty enough, you're not happy enough, you're not fun enough, your mental health just isn't perfect enough, your physical body isn't perfect enough, you're not as good as you could be at that trait, if only you'd pursued it for longer. We can do the exact same list in the opposite direction, however, that is the opposite of self-love. And you will manifest and see results of that if you are to continue to do that. You are choosing to focus on those aspects and hold them in place in your mind and therefore in your reality. That's the image of yourself that you're walking around with. And when you come into situations which have significant links to those particular things that you're assigning meaning to within yourself, you're going to witness them and experience them outwardly. That's why when you see someone who says, I'm always confident around new people, they are. They've affirmed it for so long. It's a self-loving concept. It's a concept that serves them, that makes them feel good. You don't have to always be confident, by the way. Maybe it's, I'm always calm around new people. Maybe it's, I'm indifferent and that makes me happy. Really, it's so subjective that I cannot affirm for you what it is for you to feel self-love, to feel good about yourself, to feel in a good place. However, what I can say is with those doubts, thoughts, and things that are not serving you, it's time to flip them. That is self-love, and that's proactive self-love. When I get a thought or a doubt about something in my life that maybe I'm not proud of, I went to a bit of a dark place just then, but something that I'm really not proud of, I could spiral in this moment. I could go, how could I have done that? I can never forgive myself for that, etc. Those thoughts are not self-loving. They are not beneficial. They're not helping me out, and they're not helping life out because quite frankly, it's old news and it just doesn't serve anyone now. The whole purpose of the exercise is to love the self, therefore I can love others more effectively and be more compassionate towards them as well. Self-love is a form of compassion and when we are compassionate with ourselves, we are absolutely more able to be compassionate with others. When we judge ourselves, we judge others because we put both of those parties in a state of fear. You did wrong, you're not good enough, how could you? Don't make that mistake again. Better watch out. It's important that we nurture ourselves in a way that leads to good expression afterward. Sure, you may have done things that you didn't like about yourself. You may have made mistakes. I may have made mistakes. 
Though continuing to relive those mistakes and beat yourself up about those things does not serve you. What you do is you acknowledge that that's not something you want to experience again. Ding! Tick one. Two, you change the concept of yourself around it. Instead of affirming, how could I have done that? What a mistake. I can never undo that. I'm not good enough, ultimately. You go, I recognize I was doing the best I knew how. I would never ever want to intentionally hurt myself or others because I know deep down I'm loving and I know deep down I want to have a good life for myself and I want others to have a good life as well. Maybe I acted out of a place of fear that wasn't from love. However, I recognize that now and I recognize my ability to shift my perspective. I forgive myself and I forgive everyone involved. It is done, the past is done. And what I can do now is move forward with a good view of myself and recognition that I really do care about the situation. In fact, that's probably why I'm giving myself so much shit is because I care so much about being good and having good relationships and good harmony in my life. Look at it that way. You flip it. I forgive myself for what I did. I was doing the best I knew how at the time. Things turned out better than expected. Whatever it is for you that helps you see that in a way where you are coming into a loving state again is very fundamental for experiencing a loving life. Three, this is a proactive exercise. Self-love is not something you do once, twice, 10, 20 times even, and then you're done. It's not like that. It's a daily, process it's a minute process at times it's a minute by minute process at times absolutely and it will take consistent focus on your part this sounds like a lot at first though if you think about it no matter what you're doing you're thinking about self-love or lack of self-love self-love or self jeopardization <laughs> quite frankly either way you're going to be having these thoughts so it's important to do the homework all you have to do is change the thoughts Start flipping that thought around on a regular basis. When it doesn't serve you, you affirm for the opposite. The main crux of lack of self-love is this simple statement, which Louise L. Hay as well summed up really eloquently in her own book, You Can Heal Your Life. Highly recommend. And that statement is this, I'm not good enough. That is at the bottom, the crux, the core for so many people when it comes to lack of self-love. The main affirmation to counter this for self-love is, I am good enough. Imagine a world where things actually are harmonious, beautiful, wonderful, caring, respectful, enjoyable, trustworthy, compassionate, heaven on earth. That seed is within you and that seed absolutely starts with self-love. I am a big believer that we can create a heaven on earth reality. I believe that the change absolutely starts from within and it emanates outward. And when we are strong in our convictions of self, when we are strong in our self-loving concept, we will manifest those results in our life and we will manifest them in the lives of others around us. Having compassion for self gives you compassion for others. Having love for self gives you love for others. Because instead of saying you're better than me and I'm not good enough for you, or I'm better than you and you're not good enough for me, we simply go everyone is equal and unique in their own way. This is the most harmonious stance that I can take. And I recognize that the only competition I ever have is with myself. How do I see myself? What do I see myself becoming? What is the best version of myself that I wish to be? Each of us has a unique calling within us and each of us can absolutely work together in order to promote those callings and have a wonderful existence where we are all interdependent. Though self-love is paramount to that and it is on each of us as individuals to do the inner work because that's the only thing you can ever actually affect is your own perspective, your own assumptions, your own internal decisions about life and yourself. If two people are fearful, they will come to each other from a fearful perspective. If two people are loving, trusting and caring, they will come to each other from that perspective and be able to give those energies. In this way, like attracts like. What that means is, to me, what I create within myself creates outwardly. I am attracting that which is like myself because I am having faith in it. I am living it in its entirety. Like attracts like can be summed down to I am what I am. And self-love is all about being the best M that I can possibly be for myself 
and watching my world and everyone around me reflect that back to me because I have faith in myself and them. So those are the three key takeaways in this video that I'm giving you regarding self-love and why it's so important. When we nurture ourselves, when we see ourselves as the most beautiful, radiant, amazing versions of ourselves, we create that in our life and we see it in others as well. That is absolutely a form of self-love, to love others with compassion. Absolutely. Love, 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 and love some more. If you would like to join in a community of like-minded individuals that are also working on their own manifestation journey, come check out my Facebook page below. It's a free group that you can join in and I constantly post regular things to keep us in an uplifted state where we're focusing on our manifestations. Each of us is at different various levels of experience in life and therefore the community is available to assist and support each other with creating the best version of our reality possible for each other, with each other. Also, if you want to be more proactive in your life and actually take actions towards manifesting your dream reality faster, come and join my Patreon group below. I also do my extended star sign readings at this channel, which you can check out. Though if you want to do all about manifestation, that is what the tier is called. You can join it. It is a monthly subscription and I release videos every week that can assist you with taking action in the right direction towards living the life of your dreams. They're a lot of fun. They're really effective. I do them myself and I absolutely see results in my own life. So I teach from my own experience and they will help you take action in your life that is in alignment with what you actually want for yourself. Thank you so much for watching as always. It's always a pleasure and an honor to do these recordings for you. Like, subscribe as well to join in the YouTube family. Have an absolutely wonderful space time, sending so much love, light and good vibes your way. And I'll catch you in your next video. Bye.